we don't endeavor to hold you long. We have you go to Psalms chapter 30, verse number 5, verse number 1, down through 5. We got a similar text, but we got a brand new word. A similar text, but a brand new word. There's different elements that it's important for us to hear, important for us to understand. Those that didn't stay for two are going to miss a blessing this morning. Amen. Amen. Psalms 30, but we know God is faithful. Psalms 30, began reading verses 1 through 5. We began, come on. I will extol thee, O Lord. Mm -hmm. I will extol thee, O Lord. I will lift thee up. I will glorify thee. The Bible says, come before his presence with thanksgiving. Amen. Every chance we get, we should extol or lift up or glorify God. You may say, but he hasn't done a whole lot for us. If you woke up this morning, amen, clothe in your right mind. Thank the Lord. Amen. We don't need praise teams in the church of God. Thank the Lord because we understand Amen. God has done so much for us. Amen. Not just saved us, but he kept us. Amen. Thank God he's renewing us. The Bible said, though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. That's a miracle in and itself. That salvation don't get old. You buy a bike, it gets old. You buy a car, it gets old. You buy a house, it gets old. But it's a miracle that salvation no long, no matter how long you stay saved. Amen. Though the outward man perish, you're getting older, but your salvation is not getting older. You're getting some gray hair. Those that's got a few decades understand what I'm saying. You got some gray hair, but you, you, your, your salvation ain't got no gray hair. Yes, your back hurt when you wake up, but your salvation don't hurt when you wake up. Yes, you don't feel it, it, it like you're 15 no more, but you're yet as strong as you was. Amen. As encouraged as the day you got saved. That's a miracle. After all you've been through, after all the devil has brought to your doorstep, you are set yet encouraged. You yet got a mind to be saved. You're yet as determined to live for God. There's no shadow in turning of turning in you at all. You don't have a look back spirit. You don't have a woe is me spirit. I will extol thee, O Lord. One place he said, amen, if it had not been. My, my, my. Who understands the depth of that, my God? It's not because you're so strong. It's not because your mind has been made up so determined. I'm going to stay saved. I'm going to make it through. No, no, no. It's not your prayer life, your fast life. I appreciate that. That played a part. But you get a real experience. You go through some things. You're going to understand. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. So we're thankful. He said, I will extol thee. I will glorify thee. I will lift thee up. Come on and read. I will extol thee, O Lord. Yes. For thou hast lifted me up. Thank God thou hast lifted me up. And have not made my foes rejoice over me. Have not made my foes. They came with a body. Every spirit comes with a body bag. I'm telling you, I don't care if it's a get mad spirit. That spirit was meant to take you out. That spirit, I don't give it, oh, that little lust spirit. That lust spirit was meant to take you out. He said, I will extol thee, O Lord. Amen. Why? You have not allowed my foes. Amen. To triumph over me. Come on and read. O Lord, my God. Yes. I cried unto thee. Thank God. And thou hast healed me. My mind, thou hast healed me. Thank God. We believe in divine healing physically and spiritually. Amen. You say, Brother Lee, what's physically? You go through some things in your body. My, my. And it's amazing. Everybody believe in divine healing until they get real sick. Yeah. It's amazing. That everybody shout over, glory, divine healing. Glory. Go through some stuff. Yeah. Amen. And you're going to realize, hold on. This is more than just something you sing about. This is more than something you just talk about. Yeah. My Lord, you got to get a hold of God and wait on God. But not just that. You've been healed. That's a tremendous rejoicing moment. But not just that. But I'm going to tell you, you live long enough. You're going to deal with some family hurt. You're going to deal with some children hurt. You're going to deal with some church hurt. Oh, I'm preaching. You're going to deal with some stuff. 
that if you ain't careful, bitterness going to kick in. If you ain't careful, you've been molested and your dad didn't take care of it and then they didn't deal with it like they should. I mean, it, just, it could be with all type of stuff. They overlooked me. They didn't say this. They didn't do that. They didn't come by. They had a chain fast when she got sick. When I got fit, nobody could. I mean, the devil, devil, devil. Some deep stuff hurt, but I'm thankful. And you're going to be able to say, Lord, you know what? Although they did my mama wrong, the devil didn't want me never to step foot in this church again. They never want me to come back to the church again. But although they did it wrong, Lord, you let me to see that might have been a person, but that wasn't you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That might have been some folk. Amen. But God, you still on the throne. Thank God. I'm not going to throw away this truth. Say, I don't believe in the Bible. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the church of God because somebody did something. Man, people will be people. Amen. But amen. God is able to heal us when we go through difficult things. Come on and read. Oh, Lord, my God. Yes. I cried unto thee. Uh -huh. and Thou hast healed me. My Lord. Oh, Lord, thou hast brought my up my soul from the grave. My Lord, the devil dug a grave for me, my God. Come on. He thought he had me. Amen. Another body had to go in there. Not me. I'm not there. Amen. Amen. There's somebody else in there. They had to sell that grave to somebody else. Why? Because the person they dug it for, he didn't mess around and got healed. He didn't mess around and got better. He didn't allow that situation to take him out. But he let it drive him to his knees. She let it drive her to her knees. Come on and read. Thou hast kept me alive. Yes. That I should not go down to the pit. My, my, my. Thank you, Lord. Read. Sing unto the Lord. Yes. O you saints of yes, his. Yes, yes. Sing unto Give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Give the remembrance of his holiness or deliverance. Read. For his anger endureth but a moment. My Lord, he sent us two things. Amen. But they don't last forever. Read. In his favor is life. In his favor is life. I'm not going to leave. His favor is life. Read. Weeping may endure for a night. Difficulty, crying may endure for a night or a season. Read. But joy cometh uh, in the morning. But joy or deliverance cometh in the morning. We started a message titled, There is Light at the End of the Tunnel. And this is expressing that we will go through things. We know that there's prosperity preachers today that say that if you give your life to God, you'll get a Bentley, a big house, and nine bedrooms, and ten bathrooms, and so on and so forth. But we know better than that. When Paul got saved, Jesus showed him what great things he must suffer. But we know that God's grace is sufficient. So we will go through things. There's going to be some tunnels. Tunnels are a dark and a tight place that you must travel through. A trial of some length. We spoke and shared that a bridge is not a tunnel. It's not long enough. You're going to go through some challenges, but it must endure to qualify as a tunnel. It's a prolonged, difficult situation that you got to pray and pray again and pray again. And you got to see God's face. And in the tunnel, sometimes it looks dark. As midnight it looks like there's no way out but as I said before what God brings you to he will bring you through the Bible said there have no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able to bear and will with the temptation make a way to escape this too shall pass over 396 times in the Bible it says and it came to pass, no matter what the situation was, how long they had been in the situation, it came to an end. My God. If it was the children of Israel who were in Egypt for 400 years, it came to an end. Noah preached 100 years, reigned 40 on the ark many days, but it came to an end. Various times in the Bible, we'll read about various situations that last. The children of Israel were in the wilderness 40 years, but it came to an end. One day they came to Jordan River. So when we go through things, we must encourage ourselves in understanding that there is light. I don't care if it's your marriage. 
I don't care if it's an affliction. I don't care if it's a family issue. You have to understand and you have to hold on to hope. The devil is after hope. The devil is after my God encouragement. The devil is after faith. The devil do not want you to believe that your situation that you're in will ever come to an end. It's amazing. The situations that you go through, he makes it seem like it wasn't nothing. But the one you in, he makes it seem like it's never going to end. But I want you to know the scripture said and the song poet actually said as well. The trials that you had are past. All right. They're patiently the one thou hast. If others come, they will not last. Keep praying and toiling on. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Now, we must understand that there are three things that's needed in order to make it through the tunnel. And we're going to touch on these three, but then we want to deal with a couple of aspects of the tunnel that we're burdened about in this service. One, and we're just going to just touch on them. One is when you're going through the tunnel, you're going to have to have faith. The devil attacks your faith in the tunnel like no other time in your experience. He wants you to believe that God ain't going to heal you. God is not going to bring you through this, that God is not working like he used to work. He, he'll magnify so-and-so died and they had this and so on. He just bring up whatever he can. And he's trying to destroy your faith because it takes faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that believeth must, he that cometh must believe that he is the rewarder and the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So you must have faith that despite how dark it gets, I believe God. Despite how dark this is, I believe God. I believe God is not going to fail his word. I believe that the promises are real. I believe that the promises are yea and amen. amen. I believe that God will not fail his promises. I believe that God will bag up his word. I don't believe God brought me this far to leave me alone. I don't believe God would do me like this. I believe God loves me too much. God is not going to allow when God understands, when he knows at his time. Amen. He's going to bring me through this. I have faith and I believe. Amen. God is not going to mess up his record. He's brought all the saints that have ever gone through a tunnel. Think about that for a moment. It does not matter what a saint has gone through. God has always brought the saints through a tunnel. David said, I've been young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous. I've never seen God just leave somebody there without bringing them through. So you must have faith that despite the way you feel, despite the report, despite the symptoms, the spot, despite the seemingly digression, despite all these things that they said would happen that is happening, sometimes God allows the tunnel to get darker right before it gets brighter. Sometimes the worst part and the tightest part of the tunnel is right before the break of the dawn of the new day. Amen. You must have faith and you must hold on to your faith in the midst. Of the tunnel. As Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel said, it looks dark, we're surrounded, and we don't know what to do. Mm. Sometimes you're going to be in a situation in the tunnel and you're not going to know what to do, but you got to believe and you got to know and you got to be able to say, like Jehoshaphat said, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes my God. are upon you. My Lord, my amen. God. Amen. Our amen. eyes, my Lord. Lord, that means that you my see Lord. light. Amen. That means your faith is still there. Amen. Lord, I don't know if it's going to be a day or two days. I don't know if you're going to heal this or heal that this way or that. But Lord, I don't know. But our eyes are upon you. Amen. We're not looking back. Amen. We're not, my God, being defeated. Amen. Our eyes are upon you. Lord, you're going to bring us through this tunnel that we're in, Lord God. Lord, I'm not going to look down. I'm not going to look at the waves. When you look at the waves, my God, you're going to tend to sink. But when your eyes stay on Jesus, he will bring you calmly through to the other side of the tunnel. So faith. And we see where Jehoshaphat was delivered. But also it takes patience. The Bible said in your patience, what? Possess you your, Possess soul. You your soul. Amen. And he's talking about the tunnel there. He's talking about the tunnel. One preacher said to me, he said, most people that backslide became impatient. 
Most people that failed God became impatient. It wasn't faith. It wasn't this. It wasn't the doctrine. It was just the fact that the devil wore them out. They got it. They, 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 I'm tired. I don't feel like, I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I've been in this too long. I, I got to do something. I got, so it's imperative that you realize that your patience stays intact, that you're able to understand, as he said in Habakkuk, although it tarries, it will come. <laughs> although it tarries. It will come. How many times have we seen saints battling in affliction and the enemy said, you're never, you're never coming up out of this. What you're praying for is never going to happen. But the saints kept praying, kept praying. And many times it didn't look like there was any change, but they kept praying. And how many times did God bring them through? My God. So it takes patience. I remember there was a saint who was dealing with a situation in her job. They had some type of affliction that they would black out and they would deal with this and deal with that. And how God just sustained her through the whole thing. She was able to get disability, able to get new furniture on her job, all these things because she was patient. I remember a saint had her children taken. And it seemed like there was no light. It seemed like dark. It seemed like the court voted in her husband's day, and they laughing all over town at the poor saint. But the saint stayed before God. See, when you're dealing with legal matters, you got to pray and pray and pray and pray. And one day, God brought the children back home, saved and encouraged. Many sisters overdue, child. But God bought many marriages. Seemed like it was dark. It was hopeless. Headed for divorce. In fact, the paperwork was already in. But God stepped in. My God. Amen. And now my they're thriving. There was light amen. at the end of the tunnel. My Lord, many children have seen that they've gone too far. Some was too high. they too caught up in the world. They got this going on and that going on. They don't want no God. There's light. Some too low, cracked out, messed up. Some twisted. They mind. The Bible ain't real. It was written by King James and a bunch of, and this, that, and yes, the church of God is fed. What in the world are you posting? Don't give up hope. There's a light. Don't lose hope. Said, what the devil is after is your hope. The devil is after your hope because you ain't going to pray like you should pray if you look at the situation and be like, you know what? My children just don't want it. Listen, you drug them to church. You let them sit up under this gospel. Either the Bible is right or it's not right. The Bible said, train up a child. Amen. And the way you should go. That's why the old saints say you ain't staying home. Well, I'm 15. I don't care how old you is. I pay the bills. Get yourself up. Why? It's not about right now. It, I'm, I'm bringing you because there's going to be a day in which I can't bring you no more. So I'm bringing you right now while I'm paying your bills, while I'm buying your underwear. Amen. While I'm feeding you, I'm making you get up. Well, I just don't want to. It don't seem like it's no dirt. You be shocked. The, sister, uh, the daughter got saved this weekend. She said, my other sister. She said, we'd be going through this, that, and the other, and she'd be breaking down message after message. The most person you think was the most unlikely, wasn't paying attention to sleep. The message, the word, it said, it will not return void. It will not. And you done set them up under this and set them up under this and made them sit there. Wake up. I remember the old saying, wake us up. Wake up. Go wash your face. Come back. Sit here. You listen to it. I don't feel like it. Listen to it. And I'm going to tell you, it worked. I tried to run from it. Tried to go far away. Tried to figure out this and figure out that. I ain't trying to hear this stuff. I don't even want to be here. I can't wait till I'm old enough. Well, I ain't got to come to church no more. I don't want to hear what he got. I, 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 all that time, the word was just going deep. The word just going deep. The word just going deep. My God, there is light, saints. I'm so encouraged right through here. Let us look at a couple of things and pray for us. Now, I feel for a sinner because no matter what a saint goes through, there's light at the end of their tunnel. All right. Amen. But it ain't the same way with a sinner. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Like we said, we got a fresh word for you. Pray for us. Ephesians chapter 2. No matter what a saint goes through, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. Come on. But if you're not saved and you're tuning in,
One brother came and said, he said, Brother Lee, you got to start doing online altar calls. I said, what's, what are you talking about? He said, Brother, man, when you get done, go to point, look in the camera and say, listen, you can kneel at your car. You can do this, that, and yeah. <laughs> he said, you don't know who paying attention, man. And I'm sitting up here listening to him. I go back just a few minutes ago in the office. It's so many phone calls on my phone. I'm like sitting there like, how is all these people here in the May? I, we just finished service. You, you, you don't know. You don't know. Where's Sister Bradshaw? I don't know if she's here right now, but Sister Bradshaw, one of her children came, ain't been to church in years. He came up to him the other day, said, Mama, I enjoy Sister uh, Rhonda Anderson's testimony. She said, what in the world? How do you know about Sister Rhonda Anderson's testimony? He said, Ma, I be going to church all the time. She said, I don't be seeing you. He said, no, the, the new church you got online. I be going all the time. So this weekend, I had somebody call me, one of Sister Asia Washington's uh, relatives. They called, and they said this, that, and the other. But Lee, this, that, and the other. I haven't talked to you in a long time. Miss Brother Hampton, this, that, yeah. I said, oh, yeah. After I got on, at the end of it, I just sent her the, uh, the little website link. I just went back to the office. Oh, praise God. That was just what I needed. Oh, I'm sitting there just like, you know what? COVID-19 was to put us out. Yeah. But saints, there might be some light at the end of the tunnel that we don't even know about. Stuff that we ain't even perceiving. We're thinking that God got to work this way. God is saying, just follow my lead. Just let me do what I do. You don't put me in no box. You don't understand what I'm doing right through here. Yes, the devil's cutting up. COVID-19's cutting up. But I'm cutting up too. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. Be encouraged, saints. I feel a light. I'm going to preach it just for the few moments. I have. I'm not going to hold you long. Come on and read. That at that time, you were without Christ. My Lord. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Come on. And strangers from the covenants of promise. My, my. Having no hope. Mm. And without God in the world. Hold on. Sinner. Having no hope. No light. You're going to go through some dark places where you ain't going to see no light. See, that's why saints of God don't have to go and we shouldn't go crazy. Because no matter what we go through, the way God works with it, there's always hope. Yes. Think, look at the sweetness of that, saints. It does not matter what we go through. We can hold on to God because all God got to do is speak. <laughs> think about it, saints. When they walked around Jericho, it wasn't like, it, okay, they walked around one time, a brick came, and then another brick. No, no, no. They were walking. Nothing happened. Just keep walking. Crazy, y'all crazy, Church of God people, y'all crazy. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. He was teaching us a lesson that although it don't look like nothing is happening on the outside, just keep marching. There is light. Amen. And then he tried their faith. They, 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 they marched and they marched and they marched. And he said, okay, now he wants to see. Okay, we did everything you said. We march every day. And on the seventh day, we march seven times. Then we come. Ain't nothing happened. So he's wait. Let me see. When they get done doing what I tell them to do, are they going to turn around and say, see, we did it. Ain't nothing happened. No. They kept marching, kept marching, kept marching. It said, and when they got done marching, doing everything right, they shouted. Oh, shout before, before the wall came down. Oh, just start shouting. Oh, Lord, I see the light. I believe God. Despite how it looks, I'm already shouting. They going to get saved. I'm already shouting. God's going to move. I'm already Hello, shouting. This wall is coming down. I'm already shouting. Goliath, these giants are going to fall. Amen. I'm not going to have my head down. Amen. I'm going to shout. Well, bless the Lord. So here, it said the sinner, though, when we were in sin, we had no hope. No hope whatsoever. Even as we transition. Because one day we are going to have to pass. That's a part of it. It's an appointment that we all must make. But when the rich man died, <laughs> He died. He had his big car, chariots, and all this other stuff. But when he died, my Lord, was no light at the end of that tunnel. He partied hard, lived lavishly, purple, this, that, and the other. But my God, when he drew his last breath, there was darkness. 
And he was crying out to God, send Lazarus, send Lazarus, I'm tormenting. No light at the end of the tunnel. You say, preacher, yeah, but, the, uh, but Lazarus died too. You're right, he did die. But it said, <laughs> he went to Abraham's bosom. Yeah. Amen. When we go and we draw, a line, we ain't got the sorrow as others that have no hope. Yeah. Blessed, precious is the, in the sight of God is the death of his saints. Amen. When we pass away, sometimes God lets you get a glimpse if you're close enough to the situation. But it's something that you don't see that that saint sees. Yes, they go through the darkness of an affliction. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. So here David said, I'm going to go through the shadow. I'm going to go through the tunnel, my God. But guess what? If God happens, my God, to call my number, amen, you may be around me. You're not going to see what I see. There's going to be some lights, my God, shining out of nowhere. My God, some angels showing up out of nowhere. Amen. And if I have enough strength left, you're going to hear a praise the Lord. Do you see them coming? Here they come. And don't pray me back. Let me go. Don't bring me back. I want to join heaven's choir. I want to be there. There is light at the end of the tunnel for us. My God, amen. Oh, no matter what we go through, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Now, pray with us as we bring it in. God is moving. And go to Hebrews 12, 22. And we just want to deal with the fact that there is light for the world and the church. No matter how dark things may look, there is light. Go to verse 26 for time's sake. Whose voice then shook the earth. Verse 25, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, who refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. That's Holy Ghost preach. Come on and read. Whose voice then shook the earth. This is a Holy Ghost dispensation. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised. Yes. Saying, Yet once more. Yet once more. I shake not the earth only. I shake not the earth world. Unregenerate. I shake not the earth only. But also heaven. But also heaven. The heavenly places. There is light at the end of the tunnel. For those with understanding, we know that the earth represents people unregenerated. Heavens, the heavenly places of the ecclesiastical affairs, the church. There is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel like I've never seen it before. I'm seeing the spirit of God deal with individuals. Matter of fact, let me just say it like this. Right through here, I doubt you have a child that God is not dealing with. That's a strong statement. That's a strong statement, but I'm telling you what I know. And pray for me. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it in. I'm just preaching my burden now. I doubt that there's not a person that's in a church that God is not stirring something in them. Yes. Something in them. Pray, pray for me, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, help me to take my time. God is doing something different. He said in prophecy, I'm a shake. And he's been shaken. He said, I'm a shake the earth and the heavens. The Bible said the earth, the people, there's hope of a tree. That if it be cut down, that at the scent of water, at the scent of water, Washington regenerate, what, what, by, by the scent of water, at the scent of water, my God, the word under inspiration, at the scent of water, just a scent, not even baptized with, at the scent. Mama, how in the world are you going to be online? This is what gets me in two weeks straight, two individuals that hadn't been saved in over 20 years. Online at the scent, not even here. Yes. 
Sister Carmen Mitchell, not here. She wasn't here. She wasn't here. I get in there and Haley and them come knocking on the door about 15 minutes after the message saying that open the door, open the door. She made it. She made it. She said, soon as you went with your text, I was already on my knees. I was already kneeling at the scent. It was enough inspiration in the word of God to go through the camera, to go online, to travel the world wide web, to meet me in my home, break me down, give me the inspiration at the scent of water. I got my breakthrough. My God, my God. Here this sister playing the online services with her children in the background at the scent at the scent no sir a thousand miles away over a thousand miles away hadn't been in a church service in probably 15 years something different is going on not cracked out not down and out, not mine. No, 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 no. Flying all over the world, jetting here and jetting there, doing this sophisticated, this and the other. But she said, my God, after I had all of that, but there was still a longing down in my soul. There was still something missing. Oh, the Bible said, my God, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world? There's hope, saints. No matter how, I think the song said, he reaches to the highest mountain. Amen. I don't care what mountain you think you're on. God will go up there and snatch you off of it. Amen. Down to the lowest valley. I don't care if they cracked out, weed out, alcohol out. Amen. Right through here, I'm feeling something. He said he's going to shake, and he's been shaking. I hope you somewhere where you can feel the shaking take place. God is shaking. My God, my God. You say, Brother Lee, what if they strayed away? It don't matter. My God. Amen. You read about the prodigal. He straight away took the money, went down there, partying, partying hard, doing his thing. Oh, but it was one part of the scripture that said, and he came to himself. He came to himself. In other words, you know better than how you doing. You know better than how you living. You know better, my God, than the foolishness that you doing. I didn't teach you to do that. Amen. You better have some hope. You better understand there's some light at the end of the tunnel. There's some church of God children right now that God is dealing with them. They're counting the cost. What about this? What about that? But they come into themselves saying, I just believe the revival fires are just beginning. This ain't the end of it. This is just the beginning. But you got to have hope. You got to believe God. You can't look at the difficulty. You can't look at what they're bound up by. You just got to believe word. Believe God's promises. He All said right, he's going to shake the earth. Going on college campuses, shake them up. Going in jail, shake them up. Going down south, shake them up. Going out west, shake them up, God. Like the saints of old said, grant them no peace and no rest. Shake them. And don't look at their faces. They may look nonchalant, bored, this, that, and the other. Those are the ones that's closest to the kingdom. Those are the ones that's closest. I don't want to be here. I can't wait till they get done. This ain't working on me. Oh, it's working. Oh, it's penetrating. Oh, they can't shake it away. They may try to go home. They may try to do their own thing. But the Holy Ghost is right there. You say, Brother Lee, but there's some backsliders. The Bible said that when you backslide, you get seven times worse. My God, you don't see no light for them. Oh, do I? Oh, I see a great light. I'm looking at some lights. Come on. Amen. You say, brother, give me Bible on that. I'll give you Bible on that. The judge in Israel had the power and anointing of God with a jawbone of an ass. He's destroying people, this, that, and the other. But one day he got too close to a woman named Delilah. Oh, and he told her what he shouldn't have told her. And, and he backslid. And he went out and shook himself like he did before, but he power was gone. But my God, my God, yes, they put his eyes out. Yes, they made him grind. Yes, they bound him with fetters. So he was blinded, he grinded, and he was bound up. But there's just one scripture that many people overlook, and it just causes me to have some hope for some backsliders. It said, 
his hair was cut off. Then it says, then his hair began to grow again. My Lord, my God. Amen. Just some little stubs. Not a whole lot. Just some little stubs. There's some light. I believe there's some folk whose hair, my God, is starting to grow again. I believe there's some backsliders that are out there that are tuning in. My God, that are connecting with other folk and saying the best time of my life was when I was saved. I'm doing nothing. You know what I'm finding out, saints? You say, Billy, why are you so hopeful? You know what? I've never seen a time in my life in which we were able to talk with more backsliders and saints children. And they tell you this. Not this. Oh, I, I got the man of my dream, the woman of my dream. I'm partying every night. Oh, we flying all over the world. Oh, we got a gut. You know what they're saying as, a, as a, almost a consistent refrain? I don't go nowhere. I don't do nothing. I ain't messing with nobody. I'm just, you don't even understand. And I'm sitting there just like, oh, God. Oh, your hair is growing. Oh. And then they say stuff like, I, I, I don't know. I'm just waiting on God to deal with me. You know, I just need some inspiration. Oh, your hair is growing. Oh, oh. So we just, my God, let's just get a little more inspiration around here. Let's just keep the fires burning. And I'm so hopeful. I'm so encouraged. I'm so fortunate to be in this moment, this space we're in right now. This space we're in right now. Bianca, be encouraged. I feel something. My God, I feel something, saints. I feel something different. Come on, Sister Age. I feel something different. Amen. I just feel just something. I'm, okay, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm at the point right now where don't, you can't, you can't surprise. It, I, I don't laugh at nothing no more. <laughs> I stopped laughing. I'm going to admit, it was a few times when you say, who, 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 what? I was talking in the office today, and I was telling about Brent. I said, yeah, but Brent, uh, uh, yeah, Lindley got saved. He said, who? L Lindley? You laughing? No, all right, I'm, all right, I'm, all right. I'm, 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 all right. <laughs> but she ain't on drugs. She ain't cracked out. She, she uh, fly all over the world. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Saints, I'm sensing something right through here. I see a light at the end of the tunnel that I haven't seen in some time. My oldest brother called me the other day. He was talking. And we hadn't had a conversation like this probably since I've been born. And he began to go down through there just about salvation, about pray for him, about hold me up. Just you don't understand. You don't understand. I'm just, I just need God to help me. I'm, just, I'm counting the call. I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing. And I'm just sitting there like, whoa, his hair's growing. His hair. I sent something there. So saints, be encouraged. All right. Now let's close it out. I don't want to stand between you and that tremendous food they got over there for y'all. Go to uh, Habakkuk 2 9. It said he shall shake the earth and he's shaking and the heavens. Come on and read. Woe to him that co coveteth and evil covetousness to his house. Haggai, I'm so sorry. I got 2 9, 2 8 says, The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. Despite all that the church world has gone through and is going through in the gospel day, mountain on fire, mountain fell into the sea, had to deal with the dark ages, saints worshiping in catacombs dealing with the Reformation, holiness revivals of Wesley and Finney and B.T. Roberts and all those brethren restoring sanctification to the church, the message of unity of God's people. My God, Brother Warner, Brother Speck, Kilpatrick, Brother Byram, Brother Fisher, Brother Riggle, Brother Smith, all these brethren, my God, B, uh, 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 J.T. Uh, Smoot, my God, S.P. Dunn, Raymond Jackson, all these brethren preaching everlasting gospel, 
my God, tearing down the walls of denominational division. And God blessing his people to get back together as they were in the book of Acts. One church, amen. One gospel, God blessing in a real way. But something happened. Go to Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. Something happened. The original Church of God parents who came up out of denominationalism took their stand. Amen. They say, we'll shout as their city doth burn. They came up out of Babylon. They heard the message come out of her, my people. Amen. They were down in division, denominationalism. They heard the message of unity of God's people. They came out. They took their stand. But, oh, many of those older saints began to go off the scene. My God and another generation assume power, assume authority in the church. And some of the things that they used to stand on, some of the word they used to preach, they began to shift. They began, my God, to mute the notes of the trumpet. Maybe it was a preacher's wife who said, I want to wear this and you're not going to tell me, my God. And the preacher couldn't preach against what his wife was wearing. My, 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 my. And maybe it was a big tithe pair. My God, my God. Listen, you can't have no respected person. If you're going to have a Mount Zion, my God, the word must be the word. If the word find, my God, you, 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 or you. Amen. Hit the altar. Measure to the word. That's church of God. Amen. Amen. So what happened was, if for whatever reason, Anderson, they began to shell out ministers. And they began to impregnate their minds. Because they needed to get a credential. And before the brother said, I don't need no earthly credential from no man. I need a PhD. I need to be able to pray heaven down. Yeah. Amen. I need to be anointed of God. Yeah. Amen. I don't need this, that, or the other. Well, they said we want to be like other churches. Remember that happened in the Bible one time? They said, we want a king. We want to be like other nations. You remember that? Yeah. We did the same thing. Said we want to be like other. We want our preachers to have DDs and double LDs and, and, and master degrees and doctorate degrees. We want to educate. We want this, that, and the other. So they had to have a place to educate them. See, whenever you bring all the affairs of the church to one place, you just make yourself real easy for the devil. So here he might got penetrated and got them might got compromising because they had to bring in uh, teachers that had credentials in order for the place to be accredited. So now the church of God had to go down to Babylon to bring up Babylonian teachers to teach New Testament, to teach Old Testament, to teach Greek and Hebrew. So these old these preachers who weren't even church of God was leading, teaching some of the church of God preachers. How are you going to go to Babylon for help? So now they get up in the pre-camp meeting and they invite their teachers to come and they're preaching the everlasting gospel. And the message comes will come out of my people. So they were offended. So they began to say the preachers that preach the full message. We're going to put you at the prayer meeting at six o'clock in the morning. Those that are educated, that knows a more Christ based preaching, that knows how to preach Christ better and the grace of God and the blood of Jesus and the resurrection and, the, and this, that and the other. But leave off my God, the teeth and the real gospel. Amen. So they begin to put them up. So they begin to mute the trumpet. <clears throat> so read verse number eight, chapter eight, verse one. Pray for us, saints. But something happened. Come on, read. And we had opened the seventh seal. Yes. There was silence in heaven. Yes. About the space of half an hour. So when he opened the seventh seal, the end time seal, a period of time in which God is working, there was a silence in heaven by the space, not heaven where God is, the heavenly places in the church, in many pulpits, my God. They begin to mute the trumpet on this. Muted on that. That's why sometimes I don't care what teaching you up under. You need to go back to Acts or go back to the sixth seal and find out what they taught. Because during the silence, it was just various slips ups here and slip stuff here and add this and subtract this and subtract this and subtract that and add this. So sometimes you really don't even know if what you're really up under or what you're really teaching. You got to go back to what Jesus taught, what the apostles taught. And then, amen, as a reference, look up at the sixth seal and kind of use that as a guide and say, what did y'all teach on this? Because when the silence came, there was various places. And at one point, from Maine to Montana, from the east to the west, every church of God taught the same thing. Same doctrine, same sin. But when the silence came, it depends upon what your minister, how influenced he was. Was he influenced by Anderson or did he take a stand from it? And did he come all the way out? See, some people came out of Anderson, but they left one foot in. Some came all the way out of Anderson, but they left two toes in. My God, but you got to come all the way out. 
I'm going to preach this because I'm sensing something that I ain't seen in years. I'm seeing God do something different. My Amen. God. I'm seeing God stir up my God. I'm seeing God once again, not to follow a man, not to follow some cunningly devised fable. Don't add nothing to the word. Don't subtract nothing from it. I just want the word. It's not just the word that I want. I want the manifestations that come as a result of the word being preached up under inspiration and God confirming his word. That's what I want. I didn't get saved to play games. I didn't get saved, my God, just to come to church. I want to be church of God for real. I want to, my God, see what I read about. I don't want to be a part of something that happened 40 years ago or 90 years ago. I read in my Bible that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's no respected person. If we stand like they stood, we're going to get the results they got. And we are. Go to Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. Pray for us. We're almost out. Pray for us. I see light. I see light. Although there are various people in various places that's been impacted by the silence in various degrees. I just see a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm seeing God do something. My, my, my. Oh, come on and read. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. My Lord. So now if you actually go back. Go back to Revelation 8 real quick. Just, real, just, just quick, Mom. I want you to see how that silence was dealt with. Read. It said, go ahead, verse number uh, 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Yes. Having a golden censer. Uh-huh. And there was given unto him much incense. Uh-huh. That he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints. Mom, let's skip down to verse number 5. And the angel took the censer. Ministry took the censer, yeah. And filled it with fire yeah. of the altar. Yes. And cast it into the earth. Yes. And there were voices. Come on, the earth and vessels. And thunder. Casting to the saints. Inspiration came. Voice, they got their voices back. Come on, rejoicing. And thundering. Back. Thundering the full word of God. Thunder. Boom, man. That was deep. Bam. Boom. My God. Amen. The gospel going for it. But man, whoa. My God. The word says this. Amen. Line up on line. Over here, little. Over there, little. Just thundering. My God. Not no little pity cakes. Not no little. Who do, who do, who do, gee, gee. No, no, no. I mean thundering, my God. Amen. It shake. When you thunder, it shakes some stuff up. My God. It shakes some stuff up, my God. Amen. Anything that's not nailed down is going to get shook up up under the thunder. Thundering of God's word. But look how it happened. I said it all happened because the angel took the incense with the prayers of the saints. There were some saints somewhere that were saying, Lord, I love the pulpit, but Lord, I won't Zion. Lord, I'm asking you to bring it again. Whatever it hurts, if I got a measure, I got a measure. If I got to go here, I got to go here. If I got to do this, if I got to get with it, Lord, I want what am I got to read about in the book of Acts. Lord, I want the glory. Lord, we want the full word. We don't want no silence. We don't want man's opinions. We don't want my God to have gospel. The saints praying and saints, I believe. Like never before in my lifetime that I'm sensing some saints somewhere praying before God, asking God, Lord, one more time. Lord, stir it up one more time. Getting calls from the East Coast. My God saying, we're hearing what, what we got to do. Can we fell? Oh, Lord, Lord, see, God got to move some stuff out the way. Move some stuff around the way. My God, some saints praying somewhere. Amen. On the West Coast. My God, crying out before God. It's been years. Oh, it's been years. I've been wanting, desiring. Oh, I want what I had. I want what I grew up on. Oh, I want the fullness of the power of the glory. Amen. The East Coast, the West Coast, and the Midwest. My God, some people in various places. My God, I getting a hold of God and my God I just see light at the end of the tunnel Hallelujah. I'm seeing my God, God do a work I'm seeing the prophecy my being Lord. fulfilled my go ahead God. and read brother Frank pray for me read brother and the angel took the censer yes no yes. Revelation 7 verse uh, 10 verse 7 
Let's see. Come but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, there's a group. Of, hold on. There's a group of church of God people to believe that the seventh angel is the seven is the end time trumpet, meaning that God's coming back. No. That's not Bible. It said what, Brother Frank? But in the days Spell it. Of, of the voice, days, D-A-Y-S. D-A-Y? D-A-Y-S. D-A-Y-S. In my Bible, the end trumpet, it says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the trump shall sound. The day it going to rise. When did a moment take days? But in the days of the voice All right. of the seventh. Amen. This is a message. Amen. That an angel, not Gabriel, but a ministry. That's right. Amen. All an angel is is messenger. Amen. And the Holy Ghost filled anointed church of God preacher is just a messenger who gets on his knees, get before God, get a message from heaven and deliver it to the people. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Come on and read what's going to happen. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. Let end time ministry read. When he shall begin to sound. Yes. The mystery of God should be finished. Come on and read. The mystery of God. To his servant, Amen. The Come on. And the voice which I heard. Yes. From heaven spake unto me again. They're going to understand all of the mystery. They're going to understand the seals. They're going to understand the silence. They're going to understand what the church has gone through. Things that the before didn't have full understanding. Not because and they weren't consecrated enough. It just wasn't time. It wasn't time yet. If God had showed the six seal brethren that there was a seven seal, they couldn't write songs such as eternity looms in sight. They couldn't. They may have not consecrated to the extent that they would have. But they gave up everything because they believed God is on his way back soon. We got a matter of fact, they would blast you if you had life insurance. That's how serious they were. And for what? You got a retire, brother. You got a retirement for what? That was matter of fact. They didn't even have like pastors in churches for a period. They, everybody that was ordained to the ministry, they called them flying messengers. Flying ministers. In other words, you get anointed, you got to take this gospel all over the world. That's what they believe. So it was an element of prophecy they didn't understand. But it said in the days of the voice of seventh day, the mystery shall be finished, and understanding. We understand where we're at. We understand clearly what they went through and they, what they had to go through. But come on and read, Brother Frank. Pray for me, saints. I see light. Read. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Yes. Go and take the little book. Yes. Which is open in the hand of the angel. Uh-huh. Which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. My Lord, yes. And I went unto the angel. Yes. And said unto him, Give me the little book. Come on. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter. Yes. But it shall be in thy mouth, sweet as honey. Come on. And I took the little book out of yes. the angel's hand uh -huh. and ate it up. Yes. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. Uh-huh. And as soon as I had eaten it, yes. my belly was bitter. My Lord, it was sweet to get the gospel. That's where the seven seal ministry. They stood, and they went to the angel that stood on the sea and on what? On the earth. Thank God they stood on Catholicism, had their neck on it. They also stood on Protestantism. Said they ain't right either. It's division. Amen. Amen. They stood and they said, give us what you got. Six year brother, give us the word. We want all of it. Amen. It was some stuff that's been silent. But we went back to what they taught. We went, said, give us all of it. Teach us on everything that's true. All the doctrine and standards of the church. Give it to us. They said, "Woo, it's sweet. Praise God. Amen. Divine. Gift. Praise God. Two works are great. Oh, but you got to produce it in the people. Amen. One wife for life. Oh, that's wonderful. Until yours leave. Oh, amen. And when you got to hold it. Amen. In the congregation and folks saying we're going to leave if you don't. Because I know. Amen. It's sweet to preach it and line it up. Oh, but it's bitter. Some of this gospel is bitter. Amen. When you got to go home and you got to tell Eddie Murphy, you gotta get out your living room. Oh, oh, not Eddie, oh, not Eddie, oh, Eddie, oh. Oh, it's sweet when you get, oh, glory, I will set no wicked, uh, glory. Eddie got to go, yeah, take LeBron with him. Oh, no. Oh, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. 
Amen. So here he said it's going to make it bitter. And that's what the brethren of old had to do. The brethren that we have confidence in, that we've seen restore. Anderson had been left divine healing. But my God, you hear stories. The old brethren trusting God, going to the meeting. You sitting there and you go and you pray. But I have to come here. But Gordon, come on over here. I mean, brother, what, I mean, just trusting God. But Kenley, come trusting God. You a church of God minister, you knew what you was getting. My God, just I mean the prayer of faith. You, and you, you received something when they laid hands on you. You sensed, my God, a transmitting of power. It wasn't just going through a motion. It wasn't just doing something. You sensed something. But it was tough. They had to eat it. And folk dogged him out. Folk went fellowship. Folk, my God, talking about him, saying this, that, and the other. But look what he said. That wasn't the end of it. Come on and read. And he said unto me. Yes. Thou must prophesy again. Uh-huh. Before many people. Yes. And nations and tongues and kings. So there was two aspects of the seven seal. One, they had to eat what was lost. And that's what we've seen in the brethren that just took their wings in the morning. That generation, those that stood, they had to eat it. They were persecuted, talked about. It was tough. But he didn't stop there. He could have came back as they ate and God blessed and there was glory. But in mercy, he said, now you all that's bringing in the end of the seventh, go again. Go again. You say, why would God say go again? He said, because there are some people that are honest and they're doing all they know to do. Don't just look at them. You got to just listen to what I say. They're, they're doing all they know to do. They're walking in the light that they know. Some of what they're doing was inherited. You can't rise above your ministry. You, you, you basically going to. So therefore, he said, there are some people somewhere that would do better if they were under a greater inspiration. Or if they knew better, he said, go again. When they hear the sound my Lord. of the trumpet, my saints, God. my Lord, I see light. Amen. You got folk that are tired of Babylon. Yes. Amen. They don't want to be in Babylon confused when the Bible say, be ye holy. But their preachers getting up saying we can't help but sin. You've seen all of them in the new in the uh, first service. Many of them that, that came out in the last few months. Matter of fact, you've seen one of the leaders in the Lutheran church, one of the ones that catechizes and leads the whole thing sitting right here. You see it again coming up out of Babylon. Then you have those that I'm, I, I see light coming up out of compromise. My God, you said, what's compromise? The Bible said, remove not. The ancient landmarks All right. that the fathers have set. My God. My God. You can't, my God, go and get you a church and teach what you want to teach. You got to get on your knees, get before God, get a word from God, get an understanding of what the truth is, and don't change it or rearrange it to fit the people. But what? I want to grow. You don't grow a church, my God, of God, amen, by lowering the standard. You grow a church of God by keeping the standard high and giving inspiration. My God, praying and fasting and fasting and praying and sticking with them. My God and God will raise up a people that want to be fed, people that want to be inspired. My God, amen. amen. So, amen. You got to love the truth. He said, my God, if they don't retain the love of the truth, he said, I'll send them an illusion. My God, if you better love the truth. Amen. I don't care what man, I don't care what you say. I love the truth. I appreciate your mom and daddy. I love the truth. Amen. I appreciate you, preacher. I love the truth. Don't come with nothing. Don't shift nothing. That's one thing I appreciate about the saints here. They said, oh, I appreciate you, Brother Lee. Oh, yeah, I appreciate you. I love you, this, that, and the other. But you try to come with something different. You try to shake up something. You try, my God, to go away with this to the left, to the right. My God, you try it. You, we'll pray you up out of here. We'll get on our knees, my God, and get before God. Amen. And tell God to clean the camp back out. But Lee, it's already been a shaking. And you be careful unless you get shook up. My God, hold the standard, my God. Oh, don't look at their faces. Preach it anyway. If they leave let them leave but preach it anyway got to replace them got to bring Lord, some more in God. that wanted amen 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 i feel a hopefulness i see a light amen and then there 
is those that are coming out of division. You say, but Lee, what are, what are you talking about? Division. The Bible said we should all be one. Should be no division. Amen. Shouldn't be this camp over here, this camp over there, this camp. Who you with? You know how you can tell division? Because you got to join it. Division is like Babylon. You got to join. I ain't got no fellas. I ain't got nothing for you to join. Amen. Amen. All we doing is we looking for those earmarks. You said, Brother Lee, what are those earmarks? In Ephesians, he said, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. The bond of peace. Those whose spirit is right. I ain't got to go in no back room and argue with you the truth. My God, those that are church of God for real, their spirits are linked. They may not even be in the same city. They may not be up under the same ministry. They ministry may not even talk to each other. But there's something about their spirits. It just, my God, relates and it connects. You say, brother, what's the earmarks of those spirits? In 1 John, he tells you the first one. He said, walk in the light. They got a spirit that honestly will walk in the light. That's church of God. I'm not following man. Don't come with nothing to the, where the Bible at, bro. But as long as it's Bible. Brother, I want it. That's the right spirit. I want to walk in light. Why? There's different levels of light in the silence depending upon where you are at. Some may have deviated with sanctification. Some may have deviated with divine healing. Some may have deviated with tongue. Some may have deviated with modesty. Some may have deviated with divorce and remarriage. Some may have deviated, my God, with uh, uh, church of God home. Some may have deviated with worldliness. Some may have deviated with Hollywood. We don't know. But if your spirit is right, if your spirit is honest, And God begins to enlighten you, not man, but God begins to enlighten you. There's something in you that will walk in that light and receive that light. And then you say, but Lee, what's the second part of a right spirit? Well, one is they'll walk in light. Two is Jude chapter Jude verse three. It said, I want to write common salvation, but you got to contend. Whoa. These folk are contending, putting forth great effort. They're getting books out, studying, praying, fasting. I will not stay where I'm at spiritually. I will not settle for where we're at right now. I want everything the church of God has ever had. Amen. I don't think the church of God has has been. I don't think our best days are behind us. I don't think we got to keep getting tapes from 1975 camp meetings. I believe if we do what's right, if we get on our face before God, that God can bring again Zion. My God, my God. And I believe with everything within me that God is touching and moving. Isaiah 2, 2, don't go there. He said, in the last days, I'm going to restore Zion, the top of the mountain. They're going to see eye to eye. Not ecumenicalism. People, they promote that ecumenicalism. Let's just all get together. Bro, you teach one work, you teach two. You teach divine healing, you teach nine. You, I ain't got to go 500 miles of fellowship. I can go up to Second Baptist. That's right. If it's just people. But we want to be inspired and challenged. We want to be able to eat whatever you preach, brother. Preach it. Amen. It lines up with the word of God. Preach it, brother. So not ecumenicalism, but real, honest, God fearing. Last scripture, Revelation 11, 14. Revelation 11, 14. We're done. My God, I'm hopeful. Come on and read, brother. The second woe is past. The second woe is past. And behold, the third woe come quickly. My, my. And the seven angels sounded. And the seven angels sounded. And there were great voices in heaven. And there was great voices in heaven. Saying the kingdom of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord. The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms, the kingdom of our Lord. And of his Christ. And his Christ. It's all about Christ. He shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Not building up an earthly kingdom, but tearing those down. You say what, brother? Kingdoms that build, people build up in their own hearts to them? Or little kingdoms of their little congregation, their little fellowship? Bruh, I ain't got to bow to you. Who is no? Tear all that foolishness down. That's why you ain't going to get the manifestations you after. Why? It's too much about you, about a man. About no. This is all about Christ. People call and say, bro, I want to come here. I want to, hey, bro, I ain't got no church for you to join. It's God's church. They said, we want to fellowship. They said, brother, we ain't going to have no formal agreement. (laughs) Amen. Just stand for all the lights you know. Contend for the faith. Be willing to walk in light. 
Amen. We reach our hand in fellowship. Every blood wash one. I feel a hopefulness that there is a generation, amen, that is raising up. And I don't mean age wise because there's going to be those of all different ages. But I just feel the season that we're in right now that God is doing something. No man is going to be able to take credit for it. Nobody's going to be able to say, I did it. I did it. I just believe the Holy Ghost is doing it himself. He's shaking the earth, my God, up and he's shaking the heavens. I just see light at the end of the tunnel. My God, people are tired of division, tired of compromise, tired of worldliness, tired of man rule, tired of, of this over there my god but they are saying lord we want to be all that the church of god should be lord we want my god the glory we want the power we want to be a part of the anointing we want our bodies healed we want our children saved we want my god every service for the glory just to pour out every meeting the glory just to pull out my god i just hope i feel a hopefulness i see light at the end of the tunnel i can't tell you how it's gonna happen i can't tell you where it's gonna happen but I can stand on tiptoe and tell you it's going to happen. The word of God is right. We are inspired. We see light at the end of the tunnel. He's shaking the earth and he's shaking the heaven one more time. My God. And God is coming back for that glorious bride. May God bless the saints. Shall we stand? Amen. May God bless the saints. Shall we stand? Light at the end of the tunnel. Light at the end of the tunnel. It's been a tunnel, tough trial that many have gone through. But we are encouraged at what God is doing. Some of us haven't seen it in years. But my God, we just want to be in position. Lord, may I be in position. Just give us just a couple of verses of song. Just go to verse, uh, uh, which I got. Yeah, that's good. Be encouraged, saints. Be in tune with the spirit, too. Be in tune with the spirit. Be in tune with the spirit. God wants you to be a part. Be in tune with the spirit. Anybody want to be saved? You can make your way down. Anybody need special prayer? You can make your way down as well. Be in tune with the spirit. I see light at the end of the tunnel. I'm so encouraged. I don't know what's going to happen this week. Come on, hurry. There's a mighty reformation sweeping over the land. God is gathering. God is gathering his people by his mighty hand. My mind. The cloudy day. Evening. Yes. With a shout of joy, we hail the light. My mind. Yes, Lord. Formation glory. My Lord. Let it shine. Let it shine, Lord. To every land. My mind. Europe and Africa, Lord. South America, Lord. My mind. Yes, and it's true. My mind. Listen to this. Listen to it. Listen. When the voice from heaven sounded, Come on. Warning, all, all to flee. To flee. He's saying it again. From the turns of courts of Babel, back to Zion. Back to Zion. Glad. Glad my heart to hear the message. And I and hasten, I hasten to my, 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 my. Come on. And I'm standing in the yes, Lord. today. My, my, all the rest. All the rest. My, my. All the reformation, glory, oh, the glory. Let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, let it shine. To oh, every land. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, dear God, that, Father, despite what we've been through, despite what we're going through, we're thankful for your word. This too shall pass. Father, we're thankful, dear God, for your word and your promises that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Father, dear God, no matter what the circumstance is, how long, how dark, if our faith remains strong, you will bring us through. Father, we're just so excited about what you're doing. Many people, dear God, 
they give a lot of credit to the devil and say what he's doing. But Lord, I'm just thankful for what you're doing. Father, to be alive in a time like this. Father, it said in the book of Acts, the Lord added daily such as should be saved. Father, we're just praying that you just keep the revival fires burning. Father, we're praying, dear God, that you would establish those that are coming in. And Lord, we're not just, Father, dear God, thankful for what you're doing in the salvation area. But Lord, we're thankful for divine healing. We're thankful, dear God, for the saints. Father, dear God, in the last 30 days, how many people never heard of the church of God, got saved, and then wanted to meet about throwing away this and throwing away that and trusting God, sores all on their arm, poison ivy, my God, wanting prayer, just anointing prayer. I'm not running to Advil or Aspirin. My God, I've already done that. The same God that saved me can heal me. I said, Lord, they are babes. Oh, but you're restoring again, Zion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for backing up your word. Thank you, dear God, my God, for rebuilding again the ancient ways, dear God. Father, we're asking that you just bless. You see, dear God, what you're endeavoring to do. And Lord, the Bible said, dear God, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. We just pray, dear God, that you would lead and guide every home, every saint. Father, those you're calling to the ministry. Father, those, dear God, that you're, you're putting your hand on for a specific gospel work. Father, the Bible speaks about in Daniel. It said these are they that had uh, 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 an understanding of the times. We just pray, dear God, you would give the saints personal revelations of where we're at and what you're endeavoring to do. Father, we can't go to the left and think, my God, just, just, just do anything. But we can't go to the right thinking we it. It's all about us. It ain't about nobody else. God ain't burdening for nobody else. Come join us. Come. That's foolishness. Father, we must stay behind the lamb and let God lead and God guide and God do what he want to do. This is God's church. These are God's people. Father, dear God, may you only use those who are humble, those who are meek, and those that are lowly. We just love you so much. From the depths of our heart. And we pray, dear God, we'll stay out the way. And we'll just keep praying. Keep fasting. Keep singing. Keep preaching. Keep testifying. And lifting you up. And you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. Have your divine way. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated real briefly.